Good evening. Um, my name's Chris. We're at Adam 140 for those of you who are more familiar with me. Um, tonight, I'm going to review something a bit different. Um, some may call it a, a tax dodge. Some, some of you may call it a sensible decision. Um, the wife certainly has recommended this as something that um, it might be a good idea for me to indulge in on the basis that oh, I've had a couple today. First hot day of the year. Um, it was a jolly good time for all concerned. But this is Marsden's Parallel. Not the strong Parallel, which you may have seen before, but the 2.8% version. Now, that wins, uh, you know, the, the uh, sort of tax concession, so it comes in cheaper than that. It also gives people a bit of a, what I think what the current government are referring to as a nudge. Um, to say, you know, nudge, there you go, try something a bit weaker um, on the basis that you won't get so sloshed. Um, not really a very good idea, to be honest, um, because, well, in my opinion, beer should be drunk, and, dr drunk responsibly. I am drunk and responsibly, but that's okay. Rock on. Um, right, okay, let's open it up and see where we go. 2.8%. What delights does this hold for me? Not much on the smoke. On the pour. Wouldn't say it was that pale. Um, it's more of a kind of a Lucasay colour. Quite busy on the fizzy. What does the bottle sell us? Light and refreshing golden parallel. Uh, traditionally crafted with English hops and barley for English flavour and taste. Um, not much else other than the fact that they use lightweight bottles um, because they're better for the environment. Okay, it's fine. Um, it was really warm today, so good, frankly. Um, the more heavy bottles you can use, the better. So, we've got a Lucas Haley appearing drink. Uh, Lucas Haley in, in terms of the, the bubbles as well, I'd say, at the moment. No real head on there. Um, even a bit of a you know, shake to get something out of it. Not much going on. Okay. On the nose. Bit of biscuit, tiny touch of malt. A little bit of taste. Cheers. Okay. So lots of um. I mean, what I prefer to is kind of pinprick bubbles on the tongue. Uh, the, the, the carbonation dissipates in that way, so it feels almost like it's going up rather than down and flo you know, flowing sideways off your tongue. There's no massive hop presence in there. Um, okay, second mouthful. It's all about the biscuits, this one. Um, yeah, not not in a bad way. Like I said, a tiny touch of malt. There's almost like a, if somebody had um, got a Malteser and put it in a box and then held the box near your head. You know, like this. That's about how much malt you're getting in this. Uh, not loads, frankly. Maybe a slight touch of citrus, uh, um, a tiny bit of orange in there. Yeah, orangey. 
that's where I'd go with this. So it's orangey, it's biscuity, not unlike um, it's a very obvious connection, but not not unlike a Jaffa cake um, in some respects, it's, which isn't isn't the bad thing. Um, As I understand it, a number of football teams um, eat Jaffa cakes at half time to get their energy levels up. Um, back in my many, many years ago, when I used to, used to play football at a half decent level, um, people would occasionally nip out for a pint at half time. It was a very, very half decent level. Um, somewhere below half, if I'm brutally honest. But yeah, the occasional pint would be imbibed at half time. Um, and this would have been an admirable replacement for a Jaffa cake. It's orangey, biscuity. At two point eight percent, for me, I can't see myself treating it as a session beer. Um, if you've got almost infinite capacity, you know, and and if if you weigh nineteen stone, um, and you and you can spend afford to spend all afternoon uh, buying pints of this, great, it might get you there. Um, for me, I'm on the smaller side of things. Um, I I need a session beer to be four four percent plus. Um, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get down four and feel like I've had my money's worth. Saying that, this was I think one pound forty in Waitrose, so not an expensive beer. Um, it's just I think for me it lacks the punch. It lacks the punch that I want from a beer. Um, back to the beginning of the review. You know I'm having this after. An afternoon in the sun of, of having a few different kinds of beer. Um, you know, maybe this is a good idea in some respects. You can you can fill yourself up if you you know you, you build capacity in your stomach to kind of be filled, but you don't want to necessarily drink anymore. Maybe this is kind of an exit beer. Um, it will work in that sense too. Um, so for a rating, where would I drink it if I was struggling? Um, it's it would feel like I'd gotten in a shandy. I suppose if you if you think if you got a five percent beer and had a half five percent beer and half shandy, um, you're not actually that far off what what this would be in terms of the total pint and the alcohol content. Um, two and a half. You know, it's not much difference. Um, the difference being is that there's no lots of time in the lemonade you get in pubs is a bit sweet, a bit unpleasant, a bit flat. You know, this this is actually giving you the full beer experience. So. I can recommend it on that basis, and it's certainly nicer, much nicer than a pint of carlin. Um, okay, so what is it for? I'm giving you numerous reasons. Um, you might have some yourself. Um, would I go and buy it in the pub? Maybe, maybe I would. Um, not right this second though. Uh, in terms of the taste, in terms of the flavour, it's. Okay, I'm gonna go with seven and a half. It's it's impressed me in that it can be as weak as it is, but not compromise itself in terms of being a beer. So that that's good. Modern well Morrison's, Modern well Morrison's pale ale, one pound fourteen waitress, um, and brewed in lightweight glass. So what more can you ask for? Um, yes, well done. Um, I'm going now. Take care and cheers.